Hey guys, so welcome to today's tutorial. Uh, I will start off today by apologizing because I am not a professional at making YouTube videos. I'm still pretty new to this. Um, so, so yeah, sorry. Uh, I hope you do get something out of this. Oh, I'm covered in paint already. Um, okay, see, we're already uh, sidetracking, but today we're gonna make a kind of an abstract portrait um, and I'm going to take you guys through my process. Now, I just have like a cheap canvas right here. Uh, I think this size is, it's 11 by 14. So we're working on an 11 by 14 um, canvas. I do have my, what's this called? Easel. I have my easel. I have my easel set up vertically uh, and perpendicular to me. I should actually raise this just a little bit. All right. So uh, I have it perpendicular, uh, eye level, and vertical. Now there's a few reasons why I do this. Um, I work at an upright angle at all times because it helps with perspective. It helps, it makes it easier for you um, to keep everything in line with your perspective. And it also makes it easy when you have your reference image also at the same angle. Now it's a, it's not exact, but we got close. All right. Um, this is going to help me a lot when I am going from my reference back to my canvas. Now I've got a few secrets uh, to share with you guys. Don't tell anyone. I mean, it's the internet, right? Uh, but anyways, getting sidetracked already. Um, here's my reference image. Now, my secret is I created this in Blender. This is a 3D model that I set up the composition. Um, I adjusted the features, set up my lighting, the camera angle, everything. And I do that a lot. Um, oh, you can't really see them in the background, but a lot of my paintings are uh, uh, I model. I create the model or edit a model in Blender. And um, that's how I make my my reference images. So anyways, we have a reference image here that we're going to be using. Now, when I'm using my reference image, I'm just using it lightly. I'm not going for a one-to-one -one exact replica of this. Uh, and you can see I have um, made the lighting very dramatic and it's for a particular reason. When I'm looking for a good reference photo or when I'm taking a reference photo of myself, I am looking for three things, and that's shadow under the nose. Oh, I just poked my nose. Shadow under the nose, shadow under the top lip, shadow under the eyebrow ridge, and then also shadow under the neck is always helpful. Um, and you can see we have those shadows here. The whole bottom of the nose is in shadow. We have, um, these are lighter shadows, but we do have shadow under the brow ridge, and you can see the top lip is in shadow. Also under the bottom lip is in shadow too. That's a great sign. Now, why do I look for this? Well, because it makes it super easy when I'm going to paint. Uh, you can see the same thing in these paintings on the background, the shadow under the nose, top lip in shadow, shadow under the brow bones. There we go. I'm backwards, so I'm like trying to Okay. Uh, anyway, so you get the point. It just makes it nice and easy for you when you're um, going to set up here. It's a lot easier to draw the shadows than it is to draw the features. Draw the shadows, not the features. Um, also, my, my reference image looks a little funky here because I am using my own 3D um, model here, but I have it set up in the background um, with like a hairstyle and composition that I really liked. And it's a picture I found online and I'm just using it as uh, some light inspiration for this. Uh, but yeah, besides that, we're gonna get into it. Like I said, we're gonna, it, it's gonna be a loose interpretation. So uh, bear with me, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna get messy with this one. And um, yeah, I'm gonna take you through my process. I hope you enjoy it. All right, so if you've seen my work before, um, a lot of times you'll see like drips and abstract, messy looking concoctions. But the way I do that is with um, high flow acrylic ink. So now um, these are actually just high flow acrylics, but 
I do use, let me pull them out. You can see like, here's a colored one. This is acrylic ink. Okay. So I use these high flow acrylics. Now, um, I like these golden brands. They also dry fairly fast, which when I'm working with acrylics, that's what I want. I'm a very impatient person, but I have two here. One's a shading gray and one is carbon black. So now I'm going to go in first with my shading gray and I'm going to concentrate uh, anywhere where I see shadows. Now, um, when I'm looking at my reference photo and I want you guys, um, oh my goodness, did you just see that? I just spilled oil. I just got oil paint all over my iPad. That is, um, yeah, that's fun. That's the dangers of having tech in the studio. Okay. And, oh, oh, it's everywhere. It's like, the oil paint it's all over me welcome to my life um but anyways so when you look at your reference image right what i want you to do and do this right now squint close one eye and, and like blur out the vision of the other we're gonna squint when we look at this because i don't want you to see any details i want you to blur out the details okay blur out the details look at where the darkest spots are look at where your mid-tones are and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna blur my eyes when I'm looking at my canvas too. And I'm, I'm just recreating the blobs, okay? So I'm gonna put all my, I'm gonna start with the shading gray. We're gonna put it anywhere where we see the dark stuff. So let's do it. All right, hopefully this works. Sometimes the acrylic. Oh, okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm blurring my eyes and I'm just, oh my gosh. Well, it wouldn't be a day in the studio if we didn't make a mess. All right, that's fun. Um, that went everywhere. That's not, I just wanted downward blobs, but yeah. Okay, so blowing our, blur, oh God, blurring our eyes and we're just following those shadow lines on my subject. There's where the ears are. Do the top of the ear here. We got more shadows on this side and let's do that neck. Okay, so now with the shading gray, it um, it dries like a, a pretty translucent. You can already see here where um, it's not as thick, but we're gonna give it a second. We're gonna let it um, dry. And then we're gonna go in with our carbon black. And the carbon black, here it is. Car um, the carbon black is, uh, it's just a more opaque black, super dark black. And what we're going to do there is we're going to define some areas with the carbon black. So I'll see you in a minute. All right. So we're back. It's not a hundred percent dry, but it's dry enough for us to get an idea of what's going on. So you can see I've already marked where I want my ears to be right here. I've marked the top of the head and I've marked the bottom of the chin. Now you'll also notice um, I'm not going, like I mentioned before, I'm not going exactly off of the reference image. If I was going directly off the reference image, my chin here is maybe uh, just under halfway. My chin would be closer up to here. Uh, but that's not what, what I'm wanting. Um, like I said, we're using the reference as a, a loose guide, mainly so we can get an idea of, uh, of the lighting, really. That's, that's what I want. Um, so yeah. All right. We're going to go through and add in our carbon black. And at this point, I am just going to be doing it in the the really dark spots. So under the nose, the lips, um, the chin. Yeah, maybe the side of the head or that ear. Just really thinking about where I want all of these parts. And I, I am thinking I'm going to move some of these features up after I just said that whole spiel. Okay. 
And what I'm doing here as I'm refining, remember we're, we're still, I'm being very loose with this. Um, but what I am doing is noticing that, okay, my mouth is here. Well, let's take our paintbrush. If I put a straight line across, where does the mouth line up? Okay, the corners of the mouth line up with maybe a third of the way up on the ears. Oh, I'm just now noticing you can't totally see the whole thing. There we go. Okay, so there's that straight line. All right, so if, I, if this is my mouth here, that dark line that I'm starting to put, well, then I, I really need to adjust some stuff. I need to adjust either uh, the ear location or my nose. And I think I'm gonna adjust the ears. Okay. And with that, we're gonna bring the chin up just a little. we're going to bring the top of the head down. Now it's totally okay that we have these permanent lines that are now off place, right? Uh, because, because it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, and in fact, I think it looks a lot more fun when it's not perfect. So embrace uh, your natural style. Now, um, the other thing I want to note here is a lot of times I work on colored backgrounds. You can see some of the paintings in the back. Um, I start with a toned background first. That's going to make it a, a lot easier to judge color. This one I'm really just doing in black and white, uh, so I'm not too concerned about that. So starting on this white background is fine. The other thing with that is if I, if I was working on a darker color uh, or a bigger canvas, I might be inclined to go in with white acrylic as well and put some of the uh, white in these spots where I see them there. Uh, I'm not too concerned with that today uh, because we are working on a small scale. So now at this point, I've left this, uh, I mean, this has probably been sitting for a minute. It's acrylic, uh, but it should still be fairly wet. I'm going to grab an old crusty brush, all right? You just see here, um, a, a kind of flat brush. And we're gonna go in and start shading in some of our darker areas. I like to do this um, with the drips because it just adds a fun texture. All right. Not a huge change, but a change nonetheless. And it's looking pretty crazy right now, um, but that's totally okay. We're gonna go in with our oils once this is all completely dry. Um, does it look exactly like that? No, but it wasn't the goal. Remember, we're, uh, we're wanting to be a little more loose. So, all right, I'm gonna let this dry completely before we put any oils on top. All right, so while that's drying, I figured that um, I would show you what our end goal is here. So sorry, it's like super large 
it's hard to get in the frame with it. But this is basically, um, we're recreating one of these portraits. Now, uh, it's the same thing. You can see all the drips. I'm taking you through the exact same process. Now, our next stage we're getting into is the oil paint stage. Now, uh, I'll show you the difference. Oh, it's hard to see. Okay. So up on the top of the head is just that acrylic ink. Uh, the face is pretty much all oil here. Now, the fun thing with oil paints is that you can play with the transparencies and the translucencies of all the different paints. And so that's, I wanna show you, the only two colors in this portrait are black and white, but look at the difference between, let's say the gray, the black mixed with the white opaque paint and just, the black paint translucent or transparent over the white. Um, they almost look like two different colors and it gives you a really cool effect. Now for this one, you can see the face, I've pretty much painted it all opaque. I've painted over all those scribbles entirely and I've just left parts of the body trans, uh, translucent. Whereas in this one here, let's get up close. You can see on the face, I've actually left a lot of those scribbles shown and in, in the hands as well. So um, I don't ever plan this stuff ahead of time when I'm going into it. Uh, I just kind of go with the flow and see what I like. So when we're looking at this one, um, we're, we're gonna get into it. It's almost dry, almost ready for us. Uh, but we will decide as we go how much we leave covered and, and how much we leave not how much we don't cover. It's been a long day, guys. All right. Uh, I'll see you in part two.